Dennis, you okay with that? Eric? Thank you, thank you. Good evening, special city council meeting for the city of San Dimas. It's convened. The June 15 meeting of the city council meeting, excuse me, will be conducted pursuant to provisions of governor's executive order N2920. Pursuant to the governor's executive order dated March 17, 2020, the city council is authorized to hold public meetings via teleconferencing and to make meetings accessible electronically to all members of the public seeking to observe and to address the legislative body. All Brown Act provisions that require the physical presence of city councilmen or public for the city council meetings are waived. Do we have a uh, city clerk tonight? Mr. Mayor, no, the city clerk is, is not available tonight. Um, so we will take roll call. Okay, um, you will take roll call? The city attorney is gonna take roll call today. Okay, Mr. Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Council member Bertone. Here. Council member Weber. Here. Here. Council member Ebner. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Vienna. Here. Mayor Bedar. Here. Uh, we have all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sure. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty, yes, please wait a couple of minutes. I can see more codes and whatnot. Okay. No nah, problem. John, it's probably not used to you being here.
I think that's better. I plug it into another, if John is in the back there, plug it into another jack. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulty. Uh, we'll uh, resume this meeting. I believe, Jeff, maybe you should make your announcement now before we open it up for oral communications. Sure, thank you, Mayor. And I think what you were looking for was maybe an explanation of why we're here at this special meeting tonight. Right. That, um, it, as the council and the public knows, at the last council meeting last Tuesday, uh, Council Member Ebener made a request for a future agenda item to discuss uh, the City Council adopting a resolution r related to the um, recent events in Minnesota regarding George Floyd um, and a number of matters regarding racial justice and um, police policies and police activity. Um, the Council at that time, well it was seconded by Mayor Badar. And at the time, uh, I jumped in and asked the council whether they would like staff to prepare the draft resolution uh, for the council to review at next Tuesday's council meeting. And council directed that staff should prepare that draft resolution. Uh, so this, the interim city manager has been working on that resolution over the past week or so um, and has been um, receiving input from the community. And uh, what I've been informed, and as I understand it, uh, the city manager has become uncomfortable uh, with the process of drafting this proposed resolution um, and coming up with the content for the resolution and presenting it to council um, for perhaps among other reasons, but at least one reason is that um, the city manager, the interim city manager, feels like he's getting into uh, politics, a political issue um, that's not necessarily uh, directly related to the running of the city, but uh, the, the um, International City Managers Association does have a code of ethics that uh, all city managers uh, certify that they will follow. And one of the tenets of that uh, code of ethics is to, tenet number seven, is to refrain from all political activities which undermine public confidence in the professional administrator. Um, I believe, and the city manager can speak for himself, uh, but I believe that the city manager felt that by presenting any draft resolution, the public may feel that it is either too far slanted in one direction or too far slanted in the other direction, and that may reflect poorly just by presenting that draft, may pr reflect uh, poorly on the city manager from one side or the other's perspective. Um, so the uh, Mayor called this special meeting, as the mayor has the right to do, either the mayor or three council members can call a special meeting, um, to see whether the council would like to direct a different method for preparing the proposed resolution requested by council member Ebener. So the meeting tonight is not about the content of the resolution. It is solely about the procedure for preparing the proposed resolution for next Tuesday, who will prepare it, and how it will be prepared. Um, a, a, a couple of options are that um, I, one option is a, the council could uh, choose two of its members to be on a subcommittee. Those two members could work together 
to uh, develop a draft resolution and bring it back to the council meeting next Tuesday for the council to review and revise however they would like and consider adopting. Another idea is that each individual council member could, or any council member that wanted to, could bring a draft resolution of their own to the meeting next Tuesday and the council could decide which one they want to adopt or revise it in any way they wanted to as a group. Um, I suppose another way to do it would be to continue to direct the city manager to prepare it, but um, there is the issue uh, with the uncomfortableness of that and the code of ethics. So that's what we're here to talk to uh, to talk about tonight. It is it is not the content. So um, we're hoping to stick to procedure both in the council's discussion and in the uh, public comments tonight. So that is why we're here. I'm available for questions. If you'd like to ask any, the city manager is also available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I, I first off want to uh, apologize to Brad McKinney, our our. Uh, interim city manager when this thing uh, started a week ago and we started talking about it there was a uh, motion by councilman Ebner and I did second it and then we started talking about it and the reality is what we what I seconded and I believe John was presenting was uh, getting it agendized where we could have this discussion so when I found out uh, when it was pointed out to me by other others that uh, we had kind of put Brad in a, in a kind of a bad situation. I did in fact decide that we needed a special meeting tonight so that we could get a course of action, move forward and, and have something to present, you know, next Tuesday night uh, that could be working, working. So we'll talk about that a little later, but right now I, I would like to open up the oral communications. Anyone wishing to address the city council on an agenda item? Uh, under, under the provision of the Brown Act, the legislative body is prohibited from taking or engaging in discussion on, on any item not appearing on the posted agenda. Members of the audience, do we have any callers? I'm being told at this point we have six callers. Okay. Thank you for calling your live. Hi, my name is Astor Walker, and I'm a student at San Dimas High School. The issue I have with my fellow students is that most of the Caucasians use the N word freely, and I feel very uncomfortable walking around in the hallways. But the thing that makes it the most unbearable is that when I'm. Hello? We hear you. Huh? We can hear you. Okay. But the thing that makes it the most unbearable is that when I mention it to my white teacher, she pretended she didn't know what was happening and said, I quote, black kids telling white kids that they can't say the N-word was reverse racism. That day, I just wanted my teacher to listen to me, to comfort me and help me feel like my voice mattered. But she wasn't educated enough to hear the problem at hand. Another example happened at PE this year. There were a group of kids playing around, and this boy proceeded to say the N-word, so casually. When I confronted him, he said he didn't know it was so wrong and racist to say. I want to be able to go to a school that educates students and about black lives. I want students to get a consequence whenever they are being racist, and I want to be able to live in an America where people accept each other's differences and care for each other. To fix this cycle of hatred against minorities and blacks, it would personally make me feel better if a speaker came to educate our privileged brothers and sisters yearly. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Thank you for calling your live. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. Good evening, Mayor. Thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Eric, and I'm a lifelong resident of San Dimas, and I wanted to let you know that I support this resolution. 
I've been following all of your careers for some time and your campaigns. One of the things that I noticed each and every one of you have said is that you would all represent all of San Dimas and not just a particular group, whether it be law enforcement, the uh, residents of a particular area, such as Via Verde downtown, not smaller, large businesses, but everybody. And I think that this is important because when I look around at the city council, none of you belong to communities that have been historically suffered prejudice and discrimination. So I do think it's incumbent upon you to listen to those that are part of these communities, to seek them out and to do your best to understand and to be their voice in this government. Some of you said at the last meeting that you didn't receive an invitation to the protest at San Dimas, but I also wanted to remind you at the same time, I looked at your social media and I didn't see any of you ask if anything was going on or if you could be a part of it and to lead it. And I say this because I think it works both ways, and I think it's even more important that you not wait for invitations, but invite us to have a seat at the table with you and to fight for us. The residents who are most affected by racism and discrimination want this resolution, and I hope and I know you will hear them. And to that end, I also hope you are open to hearing directly from the community and allow the community to submit a draft resolution directly for your consideration or to provide input on those that you consider. And while I expect there might be disagreements about what is included in the final draft, I encourage you to listen uh, and to understand why the community wants certain language and why it's important to them. The last point I wanted to make is that I know that some residents have expressed skepticism about this resolution and have said things like, what is the ROI? Why do we need this resolution? All lives matter. And isn't this already covered in the Bill of Rights? I'm not going to comment on these specific pieces of feedback, but I will say is this. None of the residents who have said these things are black, and it is these residents that the resolution affects the most. So I wish you all the best of luck as you take this on, that you do the right thing, that you lead, and that you make us proud. Thank you very much for your time and for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I look forward to the outcome of your discussion and your meeting. Have a great evening. Thank you for the call, sir. Next. Good evening, City Council and committee members. My name is Crystal Jones, and while I am a bit disappointed to be here yet again discussing this, I am happy that we are having this special meeting. However, contrary to how the city manager believes, I do not believe that this discussion has anything to do with politics as it is simply a human rights issue. As a parent of teenage daughters, I am often reminding them to consider the source. When they come home from school and they have a story to tell me, I ask them, consider the source and where are you hearing this from? I come to you today to ask the city council to do the same. As Beverly Tatum stated, PhD stated, we are not living in a post-racial colorblind society, but instead we are living in a color silent society where we have learned to avoid talking about race. So I ask you today to consider the sources of any opposition to the passing of this proposed resolution, which would denounce racism and the murder of George Floyd. If racism was not a problem in San Dimas, then there would be no opposition to this resolution, and it would be met with praise, and it would result in endless positives for our city. As a resident of this community whom racial bias and discrimination directly affect, I am asking that you as elected leaders to consider the sources of information that you are getting regarding the city. It is not easy to stand here vulnerable, recounting our painful experiences, knowing that the power to pass this resolution and to take community voices when creating this resolution lies with officials whom I understand, whom I have elected, but may not represent my particular beliefs or life experiences. I'm not asking you to fully understand what I have been through or what I have experienced, but I'm asking you to listen to what we are here to say. As adults, we all are aware that what we say truly matters. And with that, we know that the absence of recognition speaks volumes to what is being ignored. Do not let us, your residents who have experienced these things, be ignored. 
the expectations and values of leaders can change the tone of the conversations and of this community. We are looking to you to start the facilitation of these hard, awkward, very awkward and hard, but very necessary conversations to ensure that San Dimas is truly all that it can be for all of its residents. I call upon this council to not take the easy path, but to forge a new road, which our children will be proud to say we paved for their generation. I thank you all tonight for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much for your call, ma'am. Thank you. Next. Thank you for calling your live. Yes, hi, good evening, and thank you for taking my call. I am a resident of San Dimas. My name is Sabrina, and I'm not calling this not as a political maneuver, but as something to say to all humans, to all people. We have the right to live in freedom, all humans, and I implore the City Council of San Dimas to make the right decision. This isn't a political statement. This is a statement that supports human rights. All of us have equal rights. I am in support of San Dimas City Council adopting a resolution to denounce George Floyd's death, racism, and police brutality. And to that end, I think it's also important to say that I do believe not all police officers engage in police brutality, but it is important to make a stand against brutality. So gentlemen, thank you so much, and I know you will make the right decision. We live in a wonderful city, a wonderful community that should come together and embrace all of its community. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Thank you for calling your live. Hi, thank you for taking my phone call. My name is Kent. I'm a resident of San Dimas, and I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to consider the City Council's resolution on a statement regarding George Floyd's death, racism, and human rights. I was uncomfortable listening to the city uh, explanation that the city manager felt this was a political issue. It is not. This is an issue of human rights for all of us. Unfortunately, these are times that may make people feel uncomfortable, but they're necessary to move forward. I'm certain you'll make the right decision. I think you should ask the community for direct input on the resolution, and to you know this will lead to a better world. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next. Thank you for calling your live. Hello city, hello, city Council. My name is Chloe Jones. I'm 17 years old, and I'm a citizen of San Dimas. I believe that the city should adopt a resolution, which is necessary, because a resolution at its core, as I, I heard someone say today, is a statement about belief. And by not accepting the resolution for George Floyd and denouncing systemic racism, you're instead saying that the aforementioned resolution is against our beliefs as a city, which I believe is not correct. Not accepting this resolution to me as a community member hurts because it feels to me as though I'm being ignored, invisible, and like I don't matter because these problems are, again, a civil and human rights issues and it makes my human rights issues feel like I don't matter because I'm a human in the black community. And because of this, I would like the community who directly affects, who's directly affected by the problem to help draft the resolution because we're the people who are hurt most by these problems that are happening in society. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Next.
Thank you for calling your live. Good afternoon. Good evening, uh, Council and uh, Mayor Bedar. This, my name is Patrick Jones. Uh, I'm calling about a couple of things. One, I listened to the council meeting, and what I didn't really appreciate is that Mr. Ebner made a request to put something on the agenda for the next meeting so that you guys could discuss it. And it was seconded by the mayor. That should have been the end of it. The, the reason you guys are in this dilemma right now is because the five of you should be telling the, the city staff what it is that you want in the, in the resolution. The, I believe that the city attorney should have stopped any discussion that you guys had last Tuesday and, and put it on the agenda so that the five of you can say what you want to put in whatever resolution so that the staff can put it in there. That takes it out of city staff's uh, preview and, and they don't, they're just mimicking what you're telling them to do. That's number one. Uh, number two is that all of the complaints I keep hearing about um, are, seem to be directed at our school district. And, and I really think that, uh, you know, and, and all of the things that we've heard are not very good, but the city, the city isn't the place to fix that. If the school is having a problem, then the school district needs to hear about it. Um, I am not in supportive of a uh, proclamation at this point because I don't know what you've got on it. And until we know what you have on it, nobody should be saying that they support it or otherwise because they have no idea what the five of you are going to decide. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Shows that we have one more. Thank you for calling your live. Thank you so much. My name is Ruth Luban, and I live here in the city of San Diego. I want to mention that while some may find that a res resolution of this nature is unnecessary, the comments of last week's city council meeting speak otherwise. Issues with racial inequities are not new to San Diego. However, recent events have shined, what can I say, a proverbial spotlight on our most marginalized communities. And the black and brown members of San Dimas have spoken. So to that point, a resolution is a belief statement. And as such, they are intended to provide a foundation upon which we can establish our guiding principles needed to govern effectively. If our city does not believe a resolution is necessary to denounce George Floyd's death, as well as structural racism within our city, then does this mean our city council conversely believes racism does not exist? And the subsequent experiences of our marginalized committee also does not exist and is not important. If we, as the city of San Dimas, decide that believing in racial justice or racial injustice is not our problem, then how can we foster positive relationships with our black and brown residents? So I propose to you, for the good of all San Dimas, I ask you to consider a resolution that is both generated through the community and addresses the concerns that we have spoken about aforementionedly that will encompass both our community as well as everyone else, that will allow us to address all of our concerns. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. We have one additional call. Thank you for calling your live. 
Hi, Council. Uh, my name is Steve, and I am a resident of San Dimas. I'm calling because you have a really great opportunity here to show uh, leadership and to unite this community. I think it takes a lot of bravery for residents of San Dimas to call in, especially the younger generation, and they're doing that. They're being active and they are engaging with you, and I think it would be a shame not to listen to them and not to allow them to have a voice in creating such an important resolution. This obviously means a lot to them, um, and it means a lot to the community because we're getting quite a few phone calls of support, and I'm lending my voice to that as well. I think uh, true leadership is when you lead from, you let the residents tell you what they need and you help them get there. And I'm hoping that you will do that and allow the community to have a voice in drafting this resolution. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. It's being indicated that there are no more calls. We'll give it about 30 seconds to see what's going on. No additional calls? Okay, I w uh, I'd like to just take this, this time to uh, just pass on some information. I had an opportunity to speak to uh, a couple of the school board members this last week, immediately after. Uh, as everyone knows, I asked the city manager to forward a copy of today's meeting, or last week's meeting, over to the school district her comments and uh, as prior to this meeting I had a conversation with Carl Coles the superintendent of schools and he's indicated me that it indicated to me that the school district is is now aware or they have been aware and that they're going to they're in dismay over this and but they've now formulated a plan to go forward and to have discussions I also received an email earlier today uh, letting me know that the school district had contacted the teachers union and there's there's actually things happening so it's going to involve the, the district as well as the, the parents as well as the student body and and with the union and they're going to be working on a comprehensive program to address these issues so at this point we'll just leave that up to the school district to, to handle their deal, uh, their their affairs, as we all know, most of the calls that we've received have been indicated uh, that these are things that are school school related. We didn't receive very many calls concerning uh, the outside of school, so we're we're not you know going to dismiss all of that, but we are working with the school district to uh, let them handle the school affairs. So, with that being said. Uh, I, I think that uh, we've heard the members of the audience. Uh, this, this will be a discussion of procedure for preparing a draft resolution regarding George Floyd, racism, equality, and justice. Council? Well, I'll, uh, I'll just start off and personally apologize to Brad and to staff. Uh, I do uh, and I have been um, one to be mindful of uh, staff's positions as it relates to some of uh, the things that go on. And um, it's not your job to be political, that's our job as electeds. And um, so for that, I, uh, I spent time reading my good handy dandy ICMA uh, local government manager handbook and um, you know, was reminded that in the city manager's code of ethics um, put out by ICMA, it does lay out that city staff essentially should refrain from all political activities which undermine public confidence in professional administrators. And then it got me thinking further of the position that the council put you and put staff in by having to work on this. Um, staff is supposed to be apolitical. You're supposed to do your job. And I understand that there are many members of staff that may have uh, different life experiences and different feelings about this. Um, that may be different than uh, even your own personal opinion. And, uh, and so for that reason, that's why those guidelines exist. 
um, is to keep that out of, of that. Um, and so for that reason, I apologize. Uh, I didn't catch it sooner. Uh, I echo the sentiment of the mayor um, that once uh, that became a little bit more uh, apparent, um, I think this was the right thing to do. And to that end, um, for the mayor and council, um, I, I like uh, Jeff's idea about um, creating a, a subcommittee to council members. I'd be willing to volunteer to work on that, I guess with John, uh, to come up with language that was uh, agreeable and then bring something back uh, only if it's agreed upon uh, for council to consider. So that's uh, my comments. John? Um, well, I've, Dennis and I have talked about this, so I don't know if I could be on a subcommittee with a, another person besides Dennis. That's the, that's the only problem, otherwise, uh, and, and you might remember with the Dias arrangement way back when, again, I had talked to Dennis, and that's why I never said anything all those months, because otherwise I would have been more than willing to talk about it publicly yeah, at the meetings and everything like that. So, so in this case, um, thanks, Ryan, for the offer. I, I don't think I don't that think particular one, that particular yeah, makeup I, can help. Can, I, can I wouldn't be sure that that's going to make a difference in, in this particular case, would it, Jeff? Uh, well, I think what Councilmember Evans is referring to is that he's talked with Dennis about the content of the resolution. Then if he talks to another council member about the content of the resolution, that that's three who are talking outside of a public meeting. So uh, to take a conservative position, it would be prudent um, to, to not do that, probably. I wasn't aware of the, that Councilmember Ebener had been speaking with Councilmember Bertone. Well, to that end, then, I guess, could you share what you have then? And then if we wanted to go ahead and, and then move forward with that, with a new subcommittee, could we do that? Everything's uh, disclosed up to this point. So if everything's disclosed up to this point onto where we've gotten or where they've gotten, and then we wanted to move forward, could we do oh. that? You know, that's a good idea. If, if it is brought out in public um, what they've discussed, then we could go forward with a new subcommittee. But I, but I of course, don't want... To, those two council members are not required to disclose publicly what they have been talking right. about, of course. But nothing's in writing, or is it? No, nothing's private about it. Gotcha. All right. Well, I guess the ball's in John's court, I suppose. And you know, I, I think that from all the, the messages that we received uh, through email and also for the people that telephone, uh, they want us to do some type of resolution. And I have the feeling that everyone on this council wants to do a resolution. So I don't think that's a question. Uh, I do like the idea of two council members getting together. Uh, I would recommend uh, the mayor and John John, because uh, he's the one that brought this up, and the mayor, because he's had law enforcement background, and, and, we, and I think he represents a point of view. And what I've heard from the mayor has been very good, and he has a holistic uh, viewpoint about this. Uh, also, we individually, which I have no plan on doing, but write our own resolution that we could share with, uh, with everyone and see how they feel about it. As one of us thinks that we could do a better resolution by ourselves, and I'm not opposed to that, but I, 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 I think Well, I feel a little hamstrung because this meeting, I mean, originally I wanted to have at the last meeting under council member comments a subject, a topic that we could talk about. I was told, no, you can't do that until we have an agendized item. Then I'm told that at this meeting we're not talking about content, mm -hmm. so I can't go on and on about all the points I want to have in the resolution because we're not talking about content. So I'm following the direction of the city attorney on all these matters and also the wishes of our interim city manager, which I totally appreciate and that's, that's fine. Um, but bottom line is we need to have a resolution. We got calls from a lot of students and things about school last time, but a, they found out, or they, people who 
are using the, that kind of insulting and demeaning language learn that somewhere. And B, I don't know about anybody else, but I've heard about this kind of stuff going on in San Dimas directly from, from people who it's happened to. And they're not students. So I, I, I'm glad the school has taken the bull by the horns, because that that's a good place to start. But we totally need a resolution from this council on this issue, and it's got to be, without going into content, addressing the core problem. That's, that's, that's my thought. So I don't mind sharing some thoughts with Emmett on it. Um, the other thing that some of the callers were saying, and I know this is afoot, but there's a community group of some kind out there trying to come up with some language so I'm not sure how we fold all this stuff together. Um, in one of my original emails to Brad, where, when I thought we were gonna have input, part of it was about process. And that was saying that there's gonna be a, a number of whereas clauses, there's gonna be a number of resolved clauses, and I'd like to have them up on the board so that we could kind of, on the, on the screen, so that we can discuss them. So we're coming in here really prepared next time and it's like, you know, whereas one thing about George Floyd, whereas something else about human rights, whereas something about, you know, police reform, whatever they are, I have them up there so we can then have a discussion about things that are there. And of course, they would be on our agenda packet as I'm well. I'm not sure though, uh, and Jeff, does a resolution have to have all the whereas? Is it possible just to have a resolve? Uh, a resolution doesn't have to have doesn't have to have whereases. They usually do, but it doesn't have to be. So it could very well just read that there's an agreeable resolve by the city, by the council, basically condemning racism and brutality and violence and all the other things that we're talking about without getting into all the whereas specifics. You could do that and Actually, original, way back when, um, in the first week after George Floyd's death, I was thinking along those lines of having just a powerful statement, not really a resolution. The resolution is more of an official thing the city does, and the reason, and there's two parts to it. The whereas is kind of like, why are we doing these things? And so it'll be a number of things like that. And the action items, belief statements, or you know, things we might want to do or, or tell people, about what the council feels or wants to do is in the resolved part. So that's why you have the two parts. It, 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 that's my understanding of the way the resolutions usually run, usually work. So um, I'll, I'll be perfectly candid with you, John. I think that the council probably, I would imagine, could get to a, a resolve in a resolution that uh, probably puts the resolve out there that everyone's looking for. I think the contentious piece is gonna be all the whereas. And so I think universally, uh, I mean, every city council member here already made individual council member comments about this, denouncing it, every single one of us did. So I understand the, the action you're, you're wishing to go down this path. I think that it, it's still a resolution, it's a statement by the city to get to that place. Um, but I have a, I have a interest in working with you to be candid on making sure that everyone's represented in the resolution. If there's going to be all the whereas verbiage, no, if the, I agree, you don't need to do whereas, which is a very fine, but I think what you just said that everyone should be represented. Yeah. Our law enforcement people on our committee on, our, on this uh, council, and they have a viewpoint, and that should also be represented. And that's that's the only statement I made to John. And uh, but I feel you know 100% that we need a resolution. It has to come out strong against what happened, 100% uh, against that. And I think everyone on this council is 100% against what happened. And in fact, I haven't heard anyone outside of this council say, "Hey." There was nothing wrong with what happened. So we all should be represented. 
and I think we could do it, and, and whereas they're fine, or they're not fine, whatever we come up with. So then, and I know Emmett, you, um, sorry, somebody suggested that you and I work together. Um, well, and uh, you know, I, I hate jumping into there because of the fact that Ryan's offered to work with you, okay? You have the same problem with me because you've already talked to, no, I to think Dennis. So I, 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 the only guy that's been the oddball out here is Eric. And uh, you know, maybe you, you and, well, no, you can't because you talked to Dennis. No, well, I don't want to be on the committee. No. Den <laughs> Dennis has stated now publicly what John and Dennis talked about. So there's no Brown Act issue anymore with the subcommittee uh, with John on it. Well, then what I stated was what I've stated before, that it has to come out strong against George, the killing of George Floyd, that it has to come out strong against, you know, and there's a lot of different words you can use, racism what, what, and all that kind of stuff. What was that last thing you were talking in your mask? I'm sorry, the, the mask is really a problem. Um, there's a lot of ways, you, things you could put in there, but, you know, come out against racism and uh, racism in San Dimas, uh, for justice, respect, those kinds of things. And lastly, some kind of action item to be determined. I mean, I, you know, without going into details about that. So I guess that's- I guess I'm lost. The, those would be the kind of things I talk about. Well. I'm a little confused on the action. Well, because we're not supposed to be talking about the content, okay. uh, you know. All right. But I'm, I'm just trying to tell you the things that I told Dennis in, in general to get that all on the table. So that was generally what we, you know, I just made those kind of comments because I felt strongly about some of those things. So just to uh, touch on my kind of stance and priorities when it comes to this, um, obviously we're five individuals on the council that all have different backgrounds and experiences that we can all bring to the table um, when it comes to this resolution. To me, um, in this instance, I think it's important that uh, particularly important that we be the change that we want to see and um, ensure that the resolution uh, embodies the values of San Dimas, that it's uniting rather than dividing, and that uh, we all can fully stand behind it as a council. I think it's really important, no matter what, that this not be a four to one vote, that this be a unanimous five zero vote to pass this resolution. I agree. I, 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 I agree. I agree too. It, you know, um, thank you, Dennis, for you know recommending me. But quite honestly, I, I believe that the most we can, the best we can get out of this is to get a, a, a different v vision. And the vision is John has has been the driving force with this. Okay, and, and I appreciate that he brought it forward, and we're going to move it. I'm going to ask Eric if he would join him, and you two work together to bring something back next Tuesday night. That's what I'm gonna ask. And the rest of the council can vote against it if they feel, but- uh, Mr. Mayor, I think that's a good idea. I, I would support that. Yeah, I'm, su I'm supportive of that, and I would give uh, heavy thought to whether or not the whereases are necessary. Um, I don't know that they're necessary. If the resolve, if the action is the resolve, and we all universally agree on the tenants for which we would condemn in this city, which I think we do, then the whereas is really serve no purpose. They serve no purpose because I think every, every single council member here has already said they condemn racism and violence, and that means to everybody, that means anybody, it means against police, it means against people, it means against each other, all of it. So, you know, I just ask that uh, there's a lot of thought given to that. And I also ask that you really think about, um, you know, this is a statement from the city. That also means that I hope, depending on what your position is on this, that you go spend time at the sheriff's station and you talk to the deputies too about this because they also work for the city. And you're sending a statement out to the community that is something major, it is big. And I think that the Sheriff's Department and I think we as a council members and we as a city, Brad, everyone, I think we all universally agree on condemning all of this nonsense 
The racism should not exist in our community. Violence should not exist in our community. The other last part I would impart to you uh, is something that was brought to my attention today, is how would we feel if a city council in another state was passing some sort of resolution based off of what happened millions of miles, thousands of miles away? There are elected officials that are dealing with some very difficult times. And there are some law enforcement and governors and other electeds and community members, people, all over hurting. So, you know, this isn't a simple exercise of just scribing a resolution. It's not. And I hope it's not treated that way. I hope there's really some diligent effort done to both represent the people that we've heard express themselves so passionately about the issues they've experienced here, which I do feel needs to be addressed, and I wholeheartedly support, and I've said it a million times, and I'll say it a million more times. But I also think that, you know, to just pass a resolution, it's words. It should not be empty words. It should not be. So if there's an action thought of, I, I'm interested, I'm curious, you know, but at the same time, I hope that there's a lot of thought given to this, and I trust you guys will do that due diligence. So thank you. Well, Eric, what do you think? I'm on board for that. The one thing that I would kind of touch on is that uh, if we were to go without any whereas statements, um, that, that kind of touches on what would traditionally be an organization's value statement. And a value statement should be uh, an actionable thing. It should be something that um, you know everybody strives to work toward uh, every single day. Um, you know, most organizations uh, have a values statement, a mission statement, a vision statement, and a value statement. Generally, three separate statements, but you know, it could be a very unique opportunity to either uh, create or update a uh, a value statement for the city of San Dimas. I think that's interesting, and, and that I think could be something. A value statement is something I think maybe the city manager could work on, perhaps, for staff. I think that would probably be, we have a mission statement, I think, right? Um, do we have a value statement? That's, we, we can look into that, it's something that we can bring, bring back to council. Um, if that's what the council's wish is to make it more of a value statement instead of a... No, no, I think they're two different things. Two different things? I think, different things. I think staff needs, we, we council probably need to make sure, uh, if I'm hearing what Eric's saying, is that staff should have a governing value statement perhaps reflective of maybe some of the things that are brought forward through this uh, action we're going to take as the elected body. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, within an organization, uh, you know, the city administration, I, mm -hmm. I would like to see a, uh, you know, a, a value statement within the organization, but, you know, treating this uh, resolution as a overarching value statement for the entire city um, and its populace uh, might be a, a good perspective and, and uh, an actionable thing for us moving forward, possibly. Well, we can work on it. Now, there, there is the other issue about community members wanting to either participate or offer alternatives or, or ideas. Um, I guess we could talk about how to handle that, but I, I think they should, I, I think that, well, number one, we're not members of the community that is most affected by, by what's going on right now. So it's well and good for us to try to figure out what to say, but we really have to talk to those. Now we can do it individually, you know, and just in our daily contacts or that kind of thing, that's one thing. But as some of the callers alluded to, there are people who are trying to get something together that the council could review. Now, I don't, that's why I was kind of liking the idea, and maybe we could talk about how to do that, Eric, but of having some choices, because we're gonna come to the council in, in a week, eight days, and we're gonna have a resolution. I don't expect it to pass exactly as is. There may be something that Ryan wants to put in it. We just left out, we forgot. Maybe something that Emmett says, well, you know, you really need this in there, or that's not strong enough, or that's too inflammatory, whatever it is. So I expect our discussion next meeting not to be just a rubber stamp of what Eric and John did, but a real discussion, which brings me back to the community. So do we want to have like an alternative resolution just out there? I mean, they can always write a letter and obviously included, we'd all see it. But we could either do that or we could take some of their ideas you know, if we know what they are, and 
discuss them and even talk with them about it. What, what do you think? You know, John, I think that knowing this group, you don't have to worry about rubber stamping. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah, well, I, I'll say that I, I personally would rather trust that you two will do most of the deliberating. So whatever comes back here is as close to what you guys believe we would pass. And the reason for that is, is that um, I don't know that anything productive comes from the exercise of deliberating different versions. Other, a lot of people are gonna have a lot of passionate feelings about this, and that's what I think this subcommittee should work through, is you have a lot of people who, you have a lot of people that are speaking up. There's a lot of people that are not speaking up, and they, they are on all sides of this. And, uh, and you know, there, there, there is only one side that I've heard just like Dennis. Everyone condemns the actions that happened with George Floyd. Everyone that I've talked to does. Doesn't matter whether they're in law enforcement, teachers, whatever. I think that is universally agreed upon. But I do think that there are some people that are very passionate about um, certain choice, choice words, I guess is the way to put it. And, um, and there are others that are passionate about those choice words too. And so I think tr entrusting this subcommittee to work through all of that because uh, otherwise what will happen is we will have that council meeting and there will be versions of different resolutions um, and we as a council I think will then it will completely defeat the entire exercise because if we can't sit here and have something presented that is sensible and has been well thought through then we're going to sit here and choose something that ultimately people in the community are not going to be happy with. And to be honest with you, I want this, if we're going to do it, to be a successful 5-0 vote the way we talked about it, um, the way we hope to get it, you know, if we can get there. Um, and I just fear that if you have one, two, three resolutions up there, um, you're going to strike words, you know, there's gonna, you're, not agree, you're not going to agree with this, I'm not going to agree with that, perhaps. Um, and I don't think anything good comes from that with the community, to be frank. You know, I, I expect that you guys will meet with those people and if we have to push at a council meeting so that there's enough time for you guys to do that so be it you know but I mean I think my personal preference would be you bring back something that is not half-baked like we're talking it's almost servant time you know I don't know what do you think there I, I, I agree I agree and and quite honestly what I don't want to see is words on a piece of paper that are hollow I want them to mean something to everybody here. I want them to mean something to everybody in San Dimas, okay? Of all origins. I want people to believe that we care. And I think that's, that, that's the key. I could, we could have a town hall meeting and we could have this opinion and that opinion, but you know what? We as a collective body have to be able to hold this pail full of water and believe in it and that's what we want the community to do to believe that we we care and i believe everybody up here cares and like like ryan said everybody here has denounced this there is nobody on the that at least in this city that i've heard anywhere who does that says this was the right thing to happen but there was also people out there who are concerned that because this happened there has been a lot of things happening that really don't depict that of, of San Dimas. And, and quite honestly, with I am happy as heck to hear people call in, the students, because those are the people that this is affecting more. Now we're hearing, now starting to hear a little more from family members and stuff about how it's affecting their, their, their lifestyle. But the reality is we are nothing unless we can be true to our words. And uh, so I, I would like to see, just my opinion is to go ahead with Ryan, and, and, or not Ryan, but John and Eric uh, get together, figure out what to do the best with, okay? The one thing that Ryan said that I'm, I'm a little concerned about was that if all of us got these emails today, and a couple of the things that came about is that people, are expecting that we need to make some type of progress on this. It seems like they feel like we've 
not made instant inroads to it. Okay, and so now if we delay it another two weeks after this me next meeting, I think that they're, they're right. It is starting to be watered down and that's not what we want. We want something that's definitive. That, that, that's my speaking. We should have it by next week. Yeah, it should be done. And uh, quite honestly, I realize that both of you guys work, but. Uh, well, yeah, that means we, we, we want to have it done by the end of the day, Thursday, so that it can get on the agenda, obviously. Yeah. And, um, you know, what I'm hearing on this issue, and it's not the, the only one, of course, but it's the only one of this type that I can re remember, actually. I'm hearing a lot of people speak and speak up who haven't spoken up before. So we may not have heard from them, and it's just welcoming to hear from them now. And I think they're representative of a lot of pe other people who are kind of thinking the same thing, like, hey, we're just normal folks, and we don't talk to the city council that much. And how does John or Eric or anybody up here know what we're thinking? So that's where I'm just gonna circle back one more time to the idea of somehow getting some input from the community. Whether they, you know, if, if we allowed them to just submit a resolution of their own, I mean, that, that's happened to us before. We've gotten resolutions. We usually don't accept them whole, you know, the whole, the whole thing. But we could allow them to, you know, write a letter with a, their version of a resolution attached and have it on the, you know, as one of the things in our packet, here's some communication from a, from what, the, what, because what, I think what's going to What gonna, about if they, if they do what they want to do, they write whatever the resolution that they want to write and they submit it to you and to Eric to, to go through it, okay? And I'm not talking about, and see if there's items in that portion that you guys would like to, to look into, because you could get, you could get several versions, okay, that may become pretty, pretty much repetitious or whatever. Words are, words hurt, words mean things, okay? But I'm not gonna sit and, and vote, put my name on, and I wouldn't expect any of us, any of us up here to put our name on something that we're not willing, willing to live with, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm completely, I'm, I'm totally okay if, if you have folks that, that are interested in submitting something to you and Eric to go through, I, I have no problem with that and I'll let you guys come up with something. And, and, and it, there, there are also issues that you guys could talk to us about too. But, you know, bake this a little bit, bring it back, and, and let's discuss it. I agree with the mayor. I like the idea that, you know, any, anyone that had any two cents about it from my perspective, I'll direct them to email you guys. And I think the community, if, when we leave this meeting, should know that you are the two on the subcommittee, if they have any interest in piping up, that they sound off to you guys and you guys discern through it. I mean, ultimately, we're gonna pass one document. That's it, ultimately, it's gonna be the document we vote. So, I mean, I entrust the subcommittee to filter through all those different views and come up with something representative of the community. Okay. Mayor, I wanna make one point of clarification. Uh, if you do want the resolution to be in the packet, then yeah, the deadline to get it to Deborah would be Thursday night or Friday morning at the latest. But that's not a legal requirement. So if you need more time, you could even bring it into the meeting on Tuesday night. And of course, it's better to have it earlier for the rest of the council to read though. If we're, so how would this work, Jeff? Because that's, that's a good point, um, just knowing how we often work on these things, it's up to the last minute sometimes. Um, I mean, say there are, it's still in the formative stages, but, but we've got some, it kind of goes back to what I was th talking about before. We've got these ideas and we're not, you know, quite, they're not quite polished yet or that kind of thing, but here's the things we want to put in it. I mean, they're close and we, would it be, would it be appropriate to get that in the agenda and then have like the finalized version available the night of, I mean, if we run into that kind of a situation. Yeah, that would be completely fine. Um, if the council's okay with that, we could take what you have on Thursday night, put that in the packet. Even if it's just a you know bunch of unorganized blurbs, we could we could take that and put it in the packet on Thursday night, um, and you could have a more refined version on Tuesday night. That will not be our goal, but that will be the possibility if it has to be. I, I would like to see. For my side of it, I'd like to see a finalized document on that next Tuesday. I don't want to 
keep pushing it down the road. I don't think that's, I don't think that's fair to the community and uh, I don't think anybody up here wants to see that, okay? Uh, the one thing I wanted to, to just state, I do not want this to be just an exercise. This is a life-changing thing that for many people are concerned. So it's, it can't be just an exercise. We've got to do the right thing here. And so that's just my opinion. I'm just one of five, but I want to make sure that we all understand that this document means something. Okay? Any, any further statements? If I could just touch on to, uh, I know a few of the callers uh, earlier said that, uh, that this shouldn't be a political issue, and I, I do agree that it shouldn't, um, but one thing that I think should be recognized is that um, social justice and race topics always do tend to uh, be politicized, whether that's uh, for better or for worse. That's another discussion uh, altogether, but you know, I, I definitely do. Uh, understand the, the position of the city manager in this instance and, and these things do tend to whether they are political or not be politicized so I, I think it is important that that uh, the council come to the uh, you know final conclusion on the, the verbiage of what we want to put in this resolution it just, just a quick question Jeff uh, when I look at the agenda we have no no uh, ability for council member comments and or any oral communications at the end? How do we stand on those two issues? We don't have to hold those, but if you would like to have council member comments or another oral communications, then you certainly can. I think it would be fair, fair, so I think we'll open up for any oral communications and we'll give it about five minutes. Association of uh, Assistant District Attorneys wrote a uh, Resolution. I'm going to give a copy of it to Eric to take a, to keep, and uh, so I think it's something that both of you should look at. It. It's very good, I, I, in my opinion. Super. I'd also, I, I was hoping that we were going to get a copy of that. I, I you brought it up yeah. last week, but I never never I saw think, a copy. I think we might have got an email. With, did you get that, that from the email? I'm sorry, what? Did, was that in our city email? It, it wasn't in a city. It, it was, yes, it came uh, yeah, a yeah. week or so I mean, ago. We get so many things from so many organizations, but that was one I, I, uh, that uh, piqued my interest. Okay. John, do we have any? Mayor and Council, just want to let you know that at 7.29 p.m. today, we received an email through the public comments email address. Uh, I'm here to read that off to you. It's from Leslie Leeming. My name is Leslie Leeming. I am a historian and computer science teacher at San Dimas High School. I am emailing request. I am emailing requesting the San Dimas City Council formally accept and pass a resolution denouncing the death of George Floyd. This would speak volumes as to the City Council being on the right side of history and in support of the denunciation of racism that still exists in the country and in this community, including the San Dimas High School campus. I look forward to the passage of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor City Council, I should also note that we had 10 emails that have been posted to the record, um, are posted on our website, and are on in your packets that are on the dais tonight. John, have we heard anything from anybody? Okay. You know, uh, before we get off into uh, oral communications, or if, if we have anybody, uh, well, I'll wait till it's my turn to talk. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll start, Eric. I got everything out that I wanted to earlier, so I think I'm good. Well, I feel good about this evening. I think that uh, we're all going in the same direction, which there's a possibility that it would occur, but it really has, so that's all I have to say. I, I think something good's gonna come out of this. Thank you. Brian? Yeah, I, I agree with Dennis. I think, uh, I'm pretty excited, I think, where we'll end up. I think it'll be uh, the right place. Uh, everyone keeps saying we'll, we'll all do what we're supposed to do for the city, and uh, I think we will. So I look forward to that. Um, last week, just on one other thing, um, I know a, a member of the community um, had some concerns about uh, the face masks um, and you know, had made some comments about that. 
so uh, I will say that um, I am also wearing a San Dimas Barbershop mask again tonight, which matches its blue. It matches the color of my outfit tonight. But uh, I will say to that end that, you know, the face masks really have become, um, to a degree, a uh, personal expression by a lot of people. Uh, staff members, others, people out there really have um, embraced this difficult time and this public safety measure to be able to do it in a way uh, that is both respectable towards each other, um, but also lends itself to some personal expression. So to that end, uh, I will continue to uh, support local business. And uh, if any local business wants to bring me a mask valued at less than $25, I believe it is. Is that right? Oh, the gift limit? Yeah. $50. 50 okay. Well, we're not going to get a $50 mask. But if you've got a mask for less than that and you want to bring it, COVID-19 or not, I will wear a mask until I've worn everybody's mask. And um, I still got to be able to talk. That's the only condition. And I uh, can't have any sort of uh, symbols of hate uh, or uh, anything else on it that would uh, be denounced. Um, one community member, uh, uh, I don't know if he was joking or not, but uh, he uh, said if he'd wear a mask for Gill's Tacos, I absolutely will wear a mask for Gill's Tacos. So if you want to drop one off here at City Call Hall, I'll be happy to wear that too. Anyways, uh, that's all I got on that, and I look forward to the uh, work. And thank you both for stepping up, um, and thank you, John, for bringing it forward. I know um, uh, it takes uh, it's it's an interesting position to take. It's a it's a bold one, um, but uh, it's a necessary one. And uh, thank you, Eric, for stepping up to uh, help out as well. I think we're moving in the right direction. Just look forward to working with Eric on this and see where we end up. Super. You know, I would like to uh, just bring one issue up, and I think I would like to see it agendized either at the next study session or, uh, or whatever. I just want to get some understanding. I've been on the council for like 13 years, okay? And it's just, and I don't quite understand how, what motivates certain things, okay? Certain issues, the prior council said, we're not dealing with, okay? We're not getting involved in state, state or national issues, okay? So in fact, nine months ago, we had an issue that was dealing with our state and all of a sudden we voted, you know, three, vo three votes came, to, no, this is a state issue, we're not dealing with it, okay? This is a national issue and it's very, very important. I just want to know where the line is, what, where's the gray area that we're dealing with. Uh, it's either a policy that we don't deal with state or national issues, and we only deal directly with what's going on with San Dimas, and or we look at all issues. And I don't, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other, because they're all very important issues. So whatever, but I just, you know, we can't have it one way or the other. We got to decide how we're gonna address it, right? So if another council member agrees, we could bring back an agenda item um, that looks at whether San Dimas has any adopted policies about that. I don't know if they do. Yeah, but I don't we could know. also bring back uh, other policies that other cities have on that issue and see if the council wanted to consider any of those policies as well. Is that an issue that should be discussed at, say, at a study session, further, further discussed at a study session? Or is that an issue that should be agendized for a regular council meeting? It could be either, maybe a study session would be a good spot for it. Okay. Is anybody interested in them? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to yeah. support the discussion. We've, we've been all over the map on that. Yeah, I just would like to get, and we may at the end of this still be all over the map because there, there's probably always something that's gonna come up that doesn't fit this mold, you know, but I mean, I just want to have a, a general discussion about it so that we all are comfortable with, with it, you know, just say, hey, we don't care. We're going to we're going to talk about everything or, you know, but I want to be I want the public to feel like they're being treated fairly because there are people who have called me about, you know, the last issue we had, OK, who said, why are you guys talking about this? You didn't want to talk about an issue nine months ago. So 
and, and, and that's it. Any further discussion? You know, just on that s sort of related topic, um, the policy on getting something on the agenda. So, you know, I really appreciate, uh, I think there are a couple, at least a couple, if not everybody on the city council is always willing to second uh, an individual's, because I know we had this discussion where at one time staff wanted three people to want to do anything to get it on the agenda, and especially Ryan and I are going, what? You know, it's like, what? you gotta, gotta already want to do it before you even talk about it. So we, we agreed, and, and I know the others have joined, that you know, if somebody wants something on there, doesn't mean we're gonna vote for it even. That's happened sometimes. And we're gonna say, yes, we're gonna, I, I want it on the agenda too. The, the gray area in the past, um, I have asked that something be agendized under my council member's comments with a topic so we could discuss it at that meeting. And that's what happened with this particular issue. And then, no problem, but I was told, you know, no, you can't do that until we go to another meeting where we ask about putting on the agenda, and then we'll talk about it. So when there's urgent things that makes, and it's okay if that's what our policy is, but maybe we should just nail that down in a study session as well, what our policy is about, like a council member wanting to put something under council member comments and just. Well, John, I just want to throw out, uh, I second your motion, yep. okay? My belief is I don't care who wants to have something put on the agenda. I don't know, I personally don't, and I'm not in favor of a second or a third or fifth or ninth. <laughs> if somebody wants it, then we should be discussing it. That's how I feel, but once again, I'm only one of five, but the reality is- I like that idea. Uh, you know what, if you want it on the agenda, bring it forward, tell us about it and let's do it. Unless you feel you need a second or third or- well, I've always wanted to one person, but I mean, maybe we should discuss that at a meeting yeah. and, and make a policy on it or something like that. All right. Any further? I, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Moved. Moved. All in favor, say goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>